Oh, hello everybody, my name is Zerduku and welcome back to Operation Chimera. You ready to get into this? I fixed up the uh, audio this time around. This is book four. The final one for now. I hope I'm a little bit more awake. I'm sorry about the last And book. I hope that uh, unlike the last uh, book, this one was edited a lot better. I hope so too, because then I won't be trying to fucking read through it and I'm cold. <laughs> Why are my feet she's cold? Because you're not wearing socks. Can you hand me my socks? <laughs> Where are your socks? They were on the floor. Oh, I know what happened to them. Give me a minute. Why do you gotta toss my socks? Is this your socks? Yes, those are my socks. You better Don't. just go and pause recording it's if fine. you didn't do that. Use the mouse. It's fine. I don't want it to take forever. We don't need to show you constantly putting on your socks, a whole thing. Who cares? It's just socks. It doesn't take me that long to put them on. Yeah. I'm not a child. It doesn't take me like five minutes just to put socks on. Okay. Let's go. Do, 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 do. One day, at approximately 2 p.m., news reporters were waiting outside the United Nations building. There was going to be a meeting about the chimeras. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> the news reporters tried to get a comment for the news from all the scientists, genetics, doctors, and psychiatrists. Of course, they all ignored them, went out, went on inside the building for the meeting. All the scientists and the genetics and doctors and psychiatrists sat together ugh, excuse me, on the third floor in a video conference with the United Nations, which includes all the presidents of the countries such as America, England, China, and Japan. My favorite country. Good evening, everybody. As you well know, I am President Westwood, said the American president of one of the television screens. You are also probably aware about the unfortunate circumstances of why we're here, continued the American president, before he was interrupted by the Japanese government. Do not try to sugarcoat it. The real reason my role here is because the chimeras have become more and more of a threat, said the Japanese government. According to our documents, there are 40 or more chimeras, chimeras that came from the laboratory in Germany. Of course, because we thought that they were human, we would let parents adopt being those who could have not have children. We now know they are not humans. They have altered identities, so now we have these monstrous children all over the world. Every time one of them gets angry or gets into a fight, they transform into a monster and destroy everything around them, and even kill people. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we, as the United Nations, ask for your opinion in your help, said the, said the Chinese government. World leaders, my name is Dr. Metford. Interesting name. Almost sounds like Methford. You'll get the reference if I explain it to you. Anywho, I'm an American genetics and psychiatrist. I personally feel that we should not blame these children for their, for these incidents. Yes, they cause major, major destruction and hurt innocent people who get in the way. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. Yeah, da -da -da -da. But remember, they have been subjected to sinister experiments that should not have been done, said Dr. Mefford. 
as he stands up with confidence and sympathy. It is my opinion that these chimeras should have human rights and not even think about crucifying them under any circumstances, said the Queen of England. That is heartless and cruel, Elizabeth. Huh? Why? Yeah. This was my worst writing. I see that. I and and the editor didn't help because uh, he didn't know what the hell I was trying to say. Yeah, when you try to explain what you're trying to say, you don't typically explain. I can't. Well. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Anyways, whether we like it or not, these are human beings, children, nevertheless. How can you say that, Doctor Meth? Said Doctor. Uh, pa. <sighs> said Dr. Mefford. Watch your tongue. You're speaking to to the United Nations, said the Japanese government. Whether we like it or not, I think Dr. Mefford has a point. Allow me to explain. If we go around executing these children, we will be no different than Hitler, said the American president. The entire conference room went quiet as Dr. Mefford sat down. Then eventually, United Nations nod their heads in agreement. One of the scientists stood up and said, World leaders, my name is Dr. Phoenix. Medical advisor, I'm the only one. I'm the one who led all of the doctors and nurses to do checkups on every single one of those kids who came out of the laboratory. This means all of the chimeras that came from Germany. I have the list of their names, so anything that the United Nations decides on what to do to deal with these chimeras, just know I have other names so we know that we can find them and what they look like. I also have their photographs of what their faces look like, said Dr. Venus. Thank you very much, Dr. Venus. Meeting adjourned, said the Queen of England, when all the televisions of the world leaders turned off. Everybody in the room got up and left. Dr. Mefford was walking down the hallway, leaving the building at the same time, thinking to himself. Can I just say that this uh, this is uh, more painful than uh, Chapter 2 of uh, Vengeful Spirit <laughs> with some of this writing? This is painful. <laughs> So you're writing. Yeah, my fault. I apologize. It's a good thing this is probably the last book I ever write for this thing. I'm a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't good. At this point, what am I to do if the governments decide to execute the children? Just because that they are not all human and part animal, they think that their human rights should not matter. As usual, the American government is against the idea even more so than the Queen of England is neutral to the idea. However, both the Chinese and the Japanese government are thinking with logic. Dr. Mefford thought to himself. Dr. Mefford stopped walking. Perhaps if I do an investigation of Dr. Sinister's work and he leaves Operation Chimera, perhaps I could understand the mechanics of this genetic phenomenon, and then perhaps learn of a way to minimize the damage. Dr. Mefford thought to himself. All of a sudden, Dr. Mefford starts walking down the hallway with confidence with an understanding of what he has to do next. Just before Dr. Mefford made it to the exit, a familiar friend... <sighs> Damn you, stop yawning! <laughs> Familiar friend of his showed up. Hello, Dr. Mufford. How was your day? Said a nurse with brown hair and green eyes. Oh, how cute. I like green-eyed people. What in the world? <laughs> okay. Green eyes are pretty. Okay, whatever. They are. But red hair's prettier. Anywho... Oh, Dr. Elsa McCain, is a good, is, it's good to see you again, said Dr. Mefford with sarcasm. 
Sarcasm over a good friend. Really? Really, really, really? I had to stop you. Oh, well, I was thinking if you would like to go out to dinner tonight, said Dr. McCain with their hands crossed her chest, across her chest, and her blistering, huh? Sorry, Dr. McCain, I'm busy, said Dr. Mufford, as he no longer paid attention to her. Ha 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 ha. Wow, you're a dick. <laughs> Sheesh. This girl is, is literally asking you out. That's not, that's actually not very common. That's very rare. Although, sometimes I think women have more balls than the guys do. Stares at you. Agreed. Ha <laughs> mm -hmm. You always say that. For once, for you ever not to be busy, shouted Dr. McCain at the same time. Dr. Mefford was slowly walking away. Dr. Mefford completely ignored what she said and walked out of the building. Dr. Mefford gathered up a passport and everything he needed for traveling to gather up some research. He was going to Wintertown in Germany. When he was at the airport desk, he saw the TV behind the person as they were clarifying his passport. There he saw in the news that two chimeras escaped from prison. Things were already getting worse, Dr. Medford thought to himself. Dr. Medford made his way on the airplane and sat down in his seat and fell asleep for the long trip to Germany. When Dr. Medford makes it to Germany, he then leaves the airport on his way to Wintertown as it's only 10 miles away from the airport. That's not far. He takes a taxi cab to Wintertown. When he gets there, he gets out of the taxi cab. Obvious. And he stops for a moment, realizing how depressing and hollow the town is. The town itself is like a cold, hollow shell filled with people wanting to forget its dark past, helping the Nazis in World War II. Instead, people of Wintertown try to look into the future. However, Wintertown seems like it has no future. Yoohoo, not sponsored. You did that wrong. It's Yoohoo, hashtag not sponsored. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, I lost my place. Meow. There we go. Dr. Metford tries to ignore the depressing feeling of Wintertown and just moves on. Dr. Metford decided to pay for a room at a hotel for the night. The, mor the next morning, Dr. Metford gathered up all his stuff and went to investigate the Chimera Fortress on one of the tall hills in Wintertown. Yet again, Dr. Metford took the taxi cab to get to the Chimera's Fortress. When he was dropped off, there he knocked on the front door. A construction worker saying at the location answered the door, staying at the location. Answered the door. Hello, and who are you? said the construction worker. Hi, my name is Dr. Metford of the UN for Chimera Rights, said Dr. Metford as he gives the construction worker his identification to prove who he is. The construction worker looks at the card and then gives it back to Dr. Mefford. Okay, but it doesn't explain why you're here, said the construction worker as he shrugs his shoulders. I'm here to investigate and understand how the chimeras work. That means looking over everything that Dr. Sinister has about the chimeras, explained Dr. Mefford. Okay, come this way, said the construction worker as he leads Dr. Mefford in the building. I have to ask... Why is there no more construction being done on the Chimera Fortress? Asked Dr. Mefford as they continued to walk 
through the building. Well, obviously became because we found a bunch of children in the basement frozen. Those children turned out to be the chimeras that everybody seems to be talking about these days. Even more interesting that the building that we name now the Chimera Fortress is not what the building is called. Matter of fact, the building itself doesn't even have a name. We just named it that. Of course, we didn't name it that until the incident that happened in the in Kansas, explained the construction worker. Dr. Metford shop, stopped and looked down. The construction worker also stopped, but he turned around and looked at Dr. Metford. Oh yes, I completely forgot about the incident that happened in Kansas. It was the first time we realized that the children were not normal. Ever since then, everybody knows about the children who came out of this fortress has been looked down upon was nothing but fear and hatred. I must understand these children and their genetic powers so this cruelty can stop, said Dr. Mefford. Well, anyways, keep going. It's just downstairs across the hallway, explained the construction worker as they continue through the hallway. Oh, I thought I was going to sneeze. Apparently, it didn't want to sneeze. A pooey. More like sniffle. <laughs> Kitty sniffles. I'm not a cat. Then stop role-playing as one. Nobody needs to know anything. Ignore him. He don't know what he's talking about. He's it's a just, weirdo. It's just a little bit too late now. So are you! <laughs> you're a weirdo times ten, how about that? <laughs> you're real. You're a weirdo times a hundred. You're a weirdo infinity. <laughs> There's no such thing! <laughs> <laughs> there is now, I just <laughs> declared it. <laughs> you can't invent something without proof! <laughs> <laughs> you are as much proof as I need. <laughs> Continue reading. <laughs> we'll deal with this later. <laughs> At the end of the hallway, with a few stairs to go down, they came come to a door with a chimera symbol. The construction worker takes some keys out of his pocket and unlocks the door and opens it. They walk into a large room with a bunch of empty containers to fit small children in. So all these machines must spend the thing must spend the things the pros the children inside said Dr. Oh Rutherford. my god. That is horrible. Why did you not notice that their editor? <laughs> oh my god. Your editor editor that that but whatever. He must not be a able to pay attention I don't know who knows he's got too much on his mind probably anywho I don't want to speak negative of someone that's not here anywho yes and I believe there's a file office at the other edge of the room at least I think so we're we weren't allowed to explore this area very much Ever since the incident in Kansas, the FBI told us to stop construction and exploring this area for security reasons, supposedly, explained the construction worker. As he points out at the edge of the room, Dr. Mefford makes his way to the exit of the room and finds a small room with glass surrounding it. Dr. Mefford opens up the blast door, glass door and goes through the file cabinets. Why does it say blast when it's supposed to be glass? Yeah, uh, I, uh, apparently my editor was not paying attention. There, it's fixed. Mm. And goes through the file cabinets. Did you do that with the other words? No. Mm. He sits down in a chair and reads the files. The files contain Dr. Sinister's research on the chimeras. 
The files explained that certain animal DNA was selected to grace certain super soldiers for Operation Chimera. Then those genetic reports to multiple selected children are not at all, not all the children survived the genetic fusion. Some of the children's DNA rejected the fusion and died slowly. So only a few survived in the genetic fusion. Then those children were cloned multiple times so that the genetic fusion was noticeable enough. The animal DNA strands that were selected from animals that have strategical thank you advantages in combat. Dr. Sinister and his staff were able to select certain genetic traits of certain animals and then put them into humans to create a controlled new species. After reading this information, Dr. Metford clenches his hand on the paper that he was reading. How could anybody do this? This is pure evil. I feel sorry for these children. I cannot imagine what they went through. Dr. Mefford thought to himself. Dr. Mefford turned around and asked the construction worker a question. Can I take some of these files with me? It would be very helpful to the UN to have this information. So please, asked Dr. Mefford. Sure, honestly, I would like this stuff to be out of here anyways. But do me a favor and do not tell the FBI agents or the UN that you took them out of here. Please, asked the construction worker. Thank you, I'll do so, said the Dr. Metford as he grabbed several different files. Dr. Metford opened up a file cabinet and grabbed more files, but however, he found a book. Dr. Metford picked it up and read that it's Dr. Sinister's diary. I should take this. This would come in handy, Dr. Metford thought to himself. Dr. Mefford took the files plus the diary with him and went back to his hotel. Back to the hotel. Before he arrived to the hotel, he put the files in the diary in a briefcase. Can you not shake? You're bouncing my chair. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. No. No bouncies, huh? No bouncies. <laughs> Stop that leg. Stop. <laughs> what are you doing? The wrong leg, but okay. <laughs> was yeah. that necessary? Yes, very necessary. No, it was not. It's <laughs> <right. laughs> Now you lost your place. Dr. Mefford arrived at his hotel, but before he went inside, he looked across the road and saw a group of teenagers with yellow bandanas with a white bull symbol on them. Dr. Mefford got a bad feeling about them, but he turned around trying not to stare at them. And he went back into the hotel, trying to mind his own business. On his way to the door in the hotel, he was walking down the hallway, going to his room, all of a sudden, somebody stepped out of a room next to his. Uh, it was Dr. McCain. Dr. Mefford stopped and asked, What are you doing here? asked Dr. Mefford. I could ask you the same thing, but it's wonderful to see you here, said Dr. M McCain with joy in her voice. Ugh, you horny, horny, horny girl. <laughs> Go take fuck? your horniness somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to me. You followed me here, didn't you? Oh, never mind. I, I, I read that wrong. It was sarcasm, not anger. Don't lie to me. You followed me, didn't you? Said Mr. Metford with sarcasm. That's not true. The president of Wintertown called me and said that they needed extra nurses at the hospital here. 
and wanting to help people, I came here, I took the job here. What's your excuse? Asked Dr. McCain with a soft voice. I don't have time for this, said Mr. Mefford as he walks away by her and goes to his room and locks the door. What is his problem? Dr. McCain thought to herself. A lot. A lot. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I gotta say. A lot. You really do not like this character. To tell you the truth, neither do I. I found him very boring. He's not boring. He's just... If he don't like her, he should say that he don't like her and doesn't want any relate kind of relationship other than friendship with her. I don't know what to say about that. It was in... It was... This was uh, something I had written when I was probably ha when I was half asleep. So now that explains a lot. Well, keep in mind, I I written like at least four episodes of Sandrag, then turn uh, well, and before that, I was writing episodes of this of this series. And by the time I was writing, so I written a total of eight books, and at that point, uh, and at the point of the last one, which was this. I was like this. No. <laughs> there, yeah, my, my brain was screwed. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, in an abandoned military base on the outskirts of Wintertown, some of the White Bowl members just returned to the location. One of the White Bowl members looked up and said, Hey, lady, Conoco, I got some news for you. You like that name, don't you? It's, it's, one, of, it's one of those Japanese names that I seem to like. I don't know why. That Dr. Metford guy from the UN is here. Should we do something about it? Said the White Bull member. Conoco looks down and says, No, it is not my target, nor my problem. Said Conoco. Yeah, what if Gabriel finds out? I don't think he he wants trouble from him. Besides, said the White Bull member. But however, he was interrupted with a du double barrel shotgun pointed to his face. Nice. Don't say another word. I don't care what anybody says here. I take orders from the no man, not even Gabriel, said Conoco. 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 What? I wanted, I wanted to throw my two cents in. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue reading. <laughs> Put safety on the gun and lays it down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me do that again. Okay. <laughs> Puts all my two cents in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. I've been dead. No, I've been killed. <laughs> my sister died of laughter. All of a sudden, everybody, including Conoco, was surprised to hear a collapse. Then everybody took a look to the entrance of the building. There stood Gabriel. Nice show. But that's very rude of you, Conoco. We're not, we're not giving you orders. You're doing favors for us, said Gabriel. Conoco lowers down her shotgun. What, what what do you mean by we? Are there others that I'm doing these favors for? Asked Conical. Gabriel just looks at her and smiles. Maybe, but we don't want you to do anything about Dr. Mefford yet. After all, Dr. Mefford is going to be a p our pawn in the events that are to come. In exchange, I will let you rest you and the rest of your targets. Uh, I will tell you the rest of your targets so you can ass assassinate them yourself. Excuse me. Wow, that is bad. I misread it the first time. Oh, I was about to say that was my fault. Explained Gabriel. You see, for every favor you do for us, we'll give you a target to assassinate. Isn't that our deal? Continued Gabriel. Yes, that is our deal. 
But remember this, Gabriel. I take, I still take orders from no man. That's not the woman I am anymore. It's a conical. To be continued, and there's more. <laughs> I'm not reading that. Do I have to, though? Yes, you do. <laughs> Next time on Operation Chimera, when Elijah and Ka Katie and Marcus turn to Bernard and Shinto for help to find, to find Sandy and Bruce, an epic battle begins. And what can we learn from Gabriel and Arthur's evil plan? Also, continue the journey with Dr. Mefford as he uncovers the secrets of the Chimeras. And also, who is this mysterious Chimera who attacked Can Kansas? To find the answer, stay tuned for more of the amazing world of Operation Chimera. The end! And that's the last of it. Yay! Hopefully that, that last part will get some people interested, but honestly, to tell you the truth, I think Operation Chimera might have been my, one of my worst books I've written, so I probably may not write anymore, but that's up to you, the audience. <laughs> Alright, this is Akari and Zadukuru signing out.